Yeah, I think we should just get straight into it. Um, my name is Jeff. Everyone knows me as Jeff Ta. I am the community manager for Ahoy Connect. So I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. And basically what I do is just meet people, network, and learn so much about what community means. And I have an awesome guest with me. Um, her nickname is Ant, but her full name is Ant here. But yeah, I'm going to let her introduce herself as well. Thanks, uh, Jeff. That's great. Uh, yeah, as you said, I'm Anthea. I'm really excited to be here. I head up engagement at OfficeZen, uh, which is a tech talent marketplace that operates in what we call Middle Earth, but is essentially the GMT plus two time zone. Um, and as part of my role, I work in enabling our community strategy, both in South Africa and the rest of Africa, and also in Europe. And I'm really excited to be here to talk a bit more about that. Yeah, I, I love that. I think one thing that I'm always interested in as someone that meets with um, community managers is our stories. I think most community managers can relate that we never actually started off as, okay, I want to be a community manager. I've met community managers that have been teachers. I think the most interesting one I've met, um, seen is a butcher. So someone that actually like cuts meat and now he's a community manager. And like that brings me to my first question. Like, what is your background per se in like community, in the community space? Like, how did you start? Like, what was the whole journey like for you? Mm -hmm. So my background, funnily enough, might not be um, as a butcher, but I do come from a political science uh, background. And um, so after I left Vasti, I went to work in traditional financial services um, in the communication space. And that's where I think I got my first touch of what I call kind of this magic that happens when you bring people together around a shared goal, around shared interests. Um, and as part of, of my um, role, I used to put uh, events together. Um, and I was always quite fascinated by how, if you can create a space with intention, with clear goals and expectation, um, what people can do when they connect. And so I went from there, um, from traditional financial services, I went into the startup world, I and mean, I ended up um, at OfferZen, where we have a very unique way um, about thinking about community. Um, and I'm at the forefront of that. So essentially, OfferZen was founded in um, South Africa in 2016, um, and it was founded by developers, um, two brothers. And really what they wanted to do was they wanted to connect software developers in South Africa to opportunities. Um, we believe that software developers can um, create the most impactful software. So really that was the purpose behind finding uh, or founding OfferZen. Um, but what we uh, developed at OfferZen in terms of how we approach community is we have built a platform that is for the community by the community. And so when we talk about um, community credentials, essentially uh, we started to think about community in two ways. Um, the first way is we know that developers who are our core audience in terms of the community that we build, they are connectors. So they are, you can go to any city and any major city, go to a meetup or Reddit um, or any online forum where events are organized and you'd probably find a bunch of tech communities. Um, so developers are by their nature connectors and they love connecting with each other. And within these communities, what we found is there's a bunch of people who are incredibly passionate about their craft, whether it's their language or their framework um, or specific communities within the tech world. And so what we started doing when we um, started the company in uh, 2016 was essentially going to these communities and just being present. We would take pizzas, we would take beers, we would take swag. And the idea was that we want to find out what makes these communities thrive. So instead of setting out to build our own community initially, we just wanted to understand what the landscape looks like, what community organizers need, how they operate and bring people together so that we can learn and in that way build our business model and then build our company. And then over time, that's kind of progressed to what it is now because what we found is that in addition to being a great way to understanding the community, the kinds of people that we want to um, engage with, we also learned that the most important thing when it comes to building community is having shared vision and people that can rally around this, making sure that you are driving and leading with value so that when people are coming together, you are creating spaces where they can connect, create, do new things. 
fostering that connection around shared interest was essential and then enabling the spaces for this to happen. So ultimately for us, we were able to learn a, a lot from those initial days of being involved in the community. And that then resulted in a whole bunch of other things. And I call it kind of this tiered approach. The initial um, uh, activities were centered around how we can enable and support existing communities. And then as we were growing our business, we were looking at how can we make um, a space for amplifying community voices, bringing the community together to create content um, uh, that we can share and amplify um, externally. And then we, you know, we went into a tier three or phase three, which was even deeper around how can we create content um, and bring people together at scale. And so that has been a, a quite an interesting journey. Today, we have a thriving community of over 100,000 um, people in tech in South Africa, the biggest, uh, yeah, uh, one of the biggest um, uh, tech communities uh, on the continent. And these are people who regularly read our newsletters, attend our events, advocate for us organically on social media and other forums. They also give us feedback on our product, which helps us be better. Um, they challenge us when we get things wrong. And importantly, they use us to get jobs, which is how we run our business and recommend us to others when they are looking for jobs. So it's a thriving community that's been built over the last five or six years. Um, and it's really been exciting to see how that's grown. Yeah, I, I love that. One key thing I noticed you said was um, you wanted to understand how developers like thought and their processes. So you brought pizza, beer and like, so like where I'm from in like Nigeria, so I see commit, the community model like in my head as a village model. So there's a phrase that says, um, if you want to go fast, go alone, or if you want to go far, go together. So that sort of works in like Africa, or not to generalize, works in Nigeria, because you have this village model where um, communities like um, Ingressive for Good or Andela, like they build up um, tech developers or they build up like tech talents and these tech talents go out and they sort of come back and build more people. So there's a cycle and it's called like the village model. So in my own sense, like what are some great examples of like community building you have seen in your country? Like I'll give you an example. Andela has a very big community in um, Nigeria in terms of like software developers, in terms of like tech people. Um, Ingressive for Good also has so many communities that are striving in Nigeria and Africa. So to you, what are some great examples you have seen, like in Europe or in South Africa, that are like, hmm, this community is actually quite active? Hmm. So I think maybe two um, examples come to mind, and I'll, I'll speak about the European example first. Um, when we, we expanded to the Netherlands um, in 2020, um, and because of the essential role that community plays in our business and our operations in South Africa, we really wanted to replicate the model in Europe. Um, software developers are software developers are software developers. Um, so there's kind of commonalities that you can find in how they organize themselves and how they build community. And so what we found was, firstly, in, in Europe and specifically in the Netherlands, we found very distinct communities um, that organizes around specific languages or frameworks um, and then kind of have one or two people running um, these communities, bringing in um, experts, organizing the events, um, but very much focused on, you know, a very specific topic, which I found was a way to be very clear about your goal and you know, the mission for, for your community. Um, and then you found uh, communities that uh, focuses on bringing people together around actually building things. Um, and there are great examples are Makerspace um, or Hackerspaces um, in the Netherlands, where really what you do is you get um, people from the tech community uh, together to build things, um, whether it's, <clears throat> you know, uh, tools to play with or um, programs that, you know, uh, you know, uh, smooth um, uh, activities or tasks for, uh, personally. Um, and that, that was really fascinating for us for a number of reasons. So in South Africa, um, if you almost compare the two, we found that a lot of the communities in South Africa organize themselves almost on a relational basis, right? So it's very much about meeting nice. in person, 
knowing one another, building those relationships, not so necessarily um, Anthea and Jeff, you know, we are full stack developers and we very much focus on our craft only. It is also Anthea and Jeff as human beings connecting around having fun and growing together. And so that was kind of interesting to see the, the difference between um, South Africa and Europe in that way. If I can think of a, a, a really great example of a, a community which happens to be one of kind of the sub communities that we built in South Africa, it's our programmable banking community, um, which essentially started when um, we uh, we ha held a conference a few years ago called Merge, um, in which we brought together uh, tech influencers, thought leaders in South Africa, um, in person for a multi-city conference. And one of the speakers that we had was the head of API at a private bank. They came to us and said, look, you know, we want to collaborate with your community. We think it's quite interesting what they're doing. Um, and they were a private bank. We were a startup. We had a thriving tech community. They were interested in building new products. And so what we did was um, we approached our community, a subset of our community, people who were keen on building and playing with new tech. Um, and we took a very systemic approach in terms of how we built that community overall. So what we did initially was we kind of had a big vision, which was how can we make programmable banking a reality in South Africa, right? It's like nothing um, uh, was happening in the space at the time. Um, it was exciting, new technology. We were partnering with a private bank that was going to give us a space to play with tools, etc. So we set down the vision and it was quite ambitious in terms of what we wanted to achieve. The next thing we did was in terms of um, creating the space for people to connect, we had a community manager whose sole responsibility was getting the community going. So this was everything from, uh, you know, setting out the cadences of how often the community would meet, how those things would be run, how we'll curate people coming in to build things in the community and assess their, their technical skills um, and really focus on onboarding people into the community and there, the important thing for me was in a thriving community, everyone has a role to play. Um, it, you can, of course, have people that's a bit more um, less active in the community, but being part of, of something means you're contributing in some way. Um, so we really wanted to make sure that the expectations are clear in terms of how we build this. So we had a community manager, we had a really strong vision, and then we started creating the infrastructure around this. So whether it's onboarding new members, um, they had to uh, do a five minute build um, and share that with the community. Um, we also created access to uh, the product owners at the private bank who would come in, give updates on APIs, those sorts of things. And then we would have fun things. So we'll do hackathons with the community. Um, and then eventually what we started doing was getting them to write so they would demo a thing that they've built. We'll translate that into a video or a blog post. And um, our team um, in our marketing team would help amplify that and get that out into the world. And in that way, we started gradually building that community. So the program called programmable banking community. And where we are now, I mean, it's just been a phenomenal growth over the last few years. So at the moment we have um, over 300 developers who are also banking customers. So they're actually using um, the stuff that they're building, which is fascinating. Um, we've built over, the community's built over 50 open source apps, tools, or prototypes, which is massive. In terms of content, whether it's demoing um, their new products, we've got over 65 blog posts just from this community. Um, wow. And then we've ha hosted over 50 meetups and events since then. So it's thriving. It's bringing new people in. It's been a massive business success. Um, and I think, yeah, a great example of how when you have a vision, you create the infrastructure, be clear on the expectations that a community can thrive and grow. Yeah, I totally agree. Because like being from Africa, yeah, there's this relational approach towards community. For example, everyone is put on unquote your friend. Like you can go to someone's house and the person will give you food. And so that sort of relates to community. Like building in Africa or building communities in Africa, like you are looking at a relational approach. So if you want to build a community in Africa, it's, there are a lot of challenges in place. I think the first thing is mobility in terms of technology. So there are more Africans with smartphones than there are with laptops. So it will make more sense to like target your community towards a platform that can use smartphones. You think that, okay, 
Um, I think that brings up like the stereotype. You think that everyone has ease of technology, like everyone's always on their laptop. But in Africa, a lot of youths or a lot of people don't have that access to technology. And it's not, it's, Africa is a big term. We have like 54 countries and each country has their own culture. So what might work in Nigeria, might not work in Kenya, might not work in South Africa. But because of, I call it the danger of a single story, like um, one popular Nigerian author, Chimamanda, said that a single story can sort of affect the way we think. So we, we can look at Africa as like a country rather than a continent, and we bring in strategies for just Africa. But what works in Lagos, where I'm from, might not work in Kenya, might not work in um, Zimbabwe. And as someone that has managed communities in like different parts of the country, I've noticed that what works in Nigeria would not work for someone in UK. I think Africans in general have a collaborative um, method towards community. Like they look at, okay, everyone should come together, sort of like a big party. Like we like train parties. So community is like a big party. You can go and meet someone down around the road. I'm like, hey, come and join me. But managing a community in Europe wasn't that same approach for me because I manage the community in the UK and there's this individual sense of um, community when everyone wants to take on their own role. And it was a big challenge to me because I'm like, I'm used to doing it the African way or the Nigerian way. So how do I sort of reevaluate myself and bring on this method? So um, my question to you now is like, building a community in South Africa and building communities in Europe, what are some of the key challenges you may have encountered? And what or how did you like overcome them? Hmm. I think the one big lesson or the biggest lesson for us is exactly that, um, which is we try to replicate a lot of what we were doing in South Africa, in Europe. Um, and the dynamic, um, the setup was completely different. So even having at the core that we want to want to support um, uh, communities and we want to build thriving tech communities, we couldn't just do that in Europe. Like we couldn't just go and replicate what we did in South Africa, to your very point. The markets are completely different. So that was one of the biggest um, lessons. The second um, lesson um, now having been operational in the last two years is we kind of had a lot of organic things develop and grow within our community in South Africa. So, South Africa. So, for example, initially, um, when we were supporting only being present at um, events, we then, as a next step, started getting people to, you know, write content for us. For example, very easy. Um, we supported them in how they. Um, put the content together and that was really helpful for them. It's an opportunity for the community to, you know, gain a new skill, shine a light on their industry, talk about their passions, all of those sorts of things. And then from there, it grew into many other things from, you know, make days where we would bring uh, developers together to build self watering plants to, like I mentioned earlier, Merge, which is a massive conference to podcast, all of these things. The key thing was that this evolved over time it's by being present in the community, listening, seeing what we can offer that adds value, and then kind of going from there. If something is not useful, you kind of move on um, in terms of, you know, the tactics that you try. So when going to Europe, the, the, the big lesson for us was going back to our roots instead of trying to take the shopping basket of tactics and then trying to just uh, replicate it in a new market. And because the dynamics um, is completely different, the community setup is different and how people show up in communities are different. So for us, it was um, taking the lesson from that was go back to the basics, be present in supporting and enabling um, the community organizers, get to know the people on the ground, be consistent, so if you are showing up and you are sponsoring with the venue, uh, make sure that you are showing up consistently to show that you're invested in helping the community thrive and then invest for the long run. Community is not going to sprout up in you know a year or six months or whatever the case may be. It doesn't care about your business metrics, but it can help your business metrics in the long run. So in a new market, for instance, when you go, you can spend a lot of money in acquiring new members through performance marketing and other sorts of tactics. But from a community perspective, you're building a sustainable way to lower that cost over time, but also generate new members coming into your community on a consistent basis. So for us, it was hard 
taking that shopping basket, trying to throw all the tactics at building community in Europe. Um, but now we're kind of learning and we're going back to the basics of let's spend time, let's support, let's work with the organizers, be present um, and have that long term vision in mind. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I always totally agree with you. Um, like I just said before, a collaborative effort towards building is usually seen in like Africa and other. For example, like it, I saw this and it blew my mind. Like a bunch of community managers around Africa, like in Nigeria, Kenya, um, and some other um, African countries, like are coming together to actually like create a festival for community managers in Africa, I think um, called CM Fest. So that blew my mind. I'm like, okay, so there's a collaborative effort there. And the truth about it is that in Africa or, or like where I'm from, culture is a big thing. So when we talk about diversity here, yeah, I'm always talking about diversity. <laughs> but when we talk about diversity, we see diversity as culture and tradition in Africa rather than its full spectrum. So diversity can mean age, it can mean language, it can mean sexual orientation, it can mean neurodiversity, it can mean food choice, it can mean religion, it can mean a lot of things. But Africa is usually focused on culture, sorry, it's usually focused on tradition and our cultural beliefs. So it sort of affects the way we even think. For example, if you are building a community in a, high, in, in a place where it's seen as a taboo to like um, talk after a certain time, your community might be at harm or like little, little things. So culture actually seeps its way into like some of the things we do. So um, I don't know if I, you can answer that, but like have you seen culture play a role in any um, community you are built in like South Africa or Europe as well, like some of the cultures in Europe? Yeah, I think um, to your earlier point around the differences between building a community in Nigeria and building in the UK, I think we found pretty similar um, approaches and experiences. Um, so definitely in, in Europe, you do have a more direct form of um, community building, very much centered around a very clear goal when you are, and so for us, when we reach out and we want to partner, we want to support, they are very interested in, you know, what do you, what is the outcome? What do you want to achieve with um, this? So, so in Africa, where it might be, you know, we want to enable the space, um, the community organizers that we've, that I've uh, come across in Europe are more like, you know, okay, so let's be clear on, you know, what winning looks like for you in terms of hardcore, this is what you get. And we can even contract around that. Um, yeah. And so, so the, that's kind of the main uh, difference. And, and I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think each, you know, to their own place and, and, and is fitting for their own community. Um, but you have to adapt, um, right, your approach. Um, at, the, at the heart of it, though, is if you truly believe in supporting and enabling and helping communities thrive, we can all organize around that. So what, regardless of what you're trying to achieve or your topic or the purpose of your community, if we can collaborate and partner around how we can do more of that, people resonate with that. And then showing up consistently um, will, will actually prove that you are in it to build that sort of thing. Yeah. And just to piggyback on that, I'll say, like using myself as an example, managing a Web3 community and managing like an esports community. These were two different communities, one based in UK, one based in America. And what sort of helped me was that I found something that every community member I sort of relate to. For example, music is a universal thing. Just having a conversation about music actually tells you more about someone. So that's like a quick tip I always use. Like, what is something I can talk about with everyone in this community that they sort of relate? And I also try and exchange like cultural information in terms of like asking people, okay, where are you from? Like teach me something about yourself. And I also exchange about myself. So there's an exchange in terms of like, this is me, Jephthah from Nigeria. This is Ant from South Africa. And you know a lot about me. So culture is a very big diamond and dynamic factor in terms of community building in Africa, but it's not, it's not an hindrance because I'm sure some people are like, okay, ah, uh, how are we going to build a community in Africa? We don't really know so much about culture. And, and that tip I always says, Nigerians or Africans are very like 
value driven in terms of like if you give me value i'll give you value back so i i mentioned before the village model so i should trademark this the village model works in um africa because it's like it takes a child to raise a village so it can be it takes a um uh, it can be like something like it takes a community to raise a village or something like that like you have to like bring in that effort and actually like be collaborative with people in terms of like building your community the collaborative approach providing values most um, companies or most brands that come to africa they could always focus on one thing like okay we're going to help developers upscale we're going to help product designers upscale and when they are providing so much value their committees always like are very active always go because there's value being provided but i've seen some companies come with okay let's just provide money like let's be monetary Definitely, people will take your money, but there's no real value. And at the end of the day, it fizzles out. So I'll say as a, as a tip for anyone who wants to be the committee in Africa, like focus on one issue you feel like is pressing and provide value for that. It can be even as little as like helping out with um, the internet connection or trying to get more people um, mobile devices to like get access to the internet. So I think my last question for you is, as someone that has managed communities in... Europe and in South Africa, what are some key lessons you have learned that has like sort of you have gone back and like, hmm, this is actually interesting. I didn't know this before. Um, I'll answer this very briefly. There's three for me that's important. So the first one is um, lighting a fire, which for me means find people who have common interests. Um, and goals and then unite them around something that makes them come alive. So create a vision and um, that they can buy into that's long till long term and ambitious. Um, fan the flames, so create structure that makes this mission come alive. Um, invest in onboarding, being clear on expectations and how members can keep the community growing. And then be open to what your community can be. Um, when you bring people together, really um, the potential for what they can do is limitless. And so being able to create that space and have people um, have the opportunity to reach the full potential of what a community can be, it's really rewarding. So I think, yeah, the three those would be my three lessons. Yeah. And I think I'll just end with one of the phrases or one of the proverbs I said before. And that sort of relates to like community. Like if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So yeah, I think we are ready to go now. Waiting for Ike to come on board. <laughs> yes, hello. That's been that's been so fantastic. I just didn't know where time went. So that was, <laughs> um, you know, the, honestly, that was that was a great conversation. And uh, I was just reading the comments, and uh, you know, people are so um, enthused and so proud of the things that you shared and um, uh, some of the experiences and, and the lessons have been so valuable for people. It looks like you spoke to um, a wide variety of, uh, you know, community builders and people around the world. Um, of course, as humans, you know, we have so many things that, you know, that, co that connect us. So um, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, we just have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, would you like to look at the questions or uh, would you like to, uh, you know, just end it here? Sure, we can take one or two questions, I think. Questions. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. So um, let me try and see if I can if I can get a question very quick. Uh, we have uh, had challenges connecting people in the Europe region as many don't view being European as a common identity. Any tips in forming regional relationships and building communities in Europe? Our um, good friend Pixies asked us. Uh, I'm happy to give some initial ideas. So definitely the um, uh, the European community is a lot more diverse, not only in terms of backgrounds and nationalities, but also lots more you know, people coming from all over the world, finding work there, especially in the tech space. For me, it comes down to what is the purpose around which you are organizing? So if you can find one that's central and that can unite people and you can start with you know, small, and then grow from there. Because if you give value and you organize people about around something they can believe in, they will find the others. And that's how you can grow um, organically over time. Awesome. Wonderful. Jepta, anything to add? Yeah, so as someone that actually manages an European community, I'll say one thing I always notice is like they're very blunt and there's banter. 
So one way to connect to European people is to a common interest in terms of like, it can be beer, it can be soccer. I think Europeans love soccer a lot. So we're actually like working on a fantasy, like football league in Ahoy Connect. And I kid you not, the channel is always buzzing. And like, it's too much um, banter. So it's like, you have to find a common interest. And this brings me back to like culture. Like what are Europeans known for? Like football is one. I just give you like a hint and look for a common interest and sort of hone in on that and sort of get your community members to talk about that. And the relationship will be formed as well. That's just my final thoughts. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Some uh, some wonderful answers there and some wonderful more questions. I wish we had more time to, uh, you know, to uh, to go through the questions. But uh, thank you very much once again for listening and for sharing that.